some may find the following disturbing. Discretion is advised. Welcome, Bears fans, to our after-game show. With me is Dan Goodwin the Third. He is the co-host of the Three Kings podcast. Dan, uh, I like I told you before we started rolling. I've been following your work for a while and really enjoy your analysis, your passion for the team, and uh, so thanks for joining me on such uh, short notice. Yeah, I, pr- I appreciate you uh, inviting me on. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. You know what I mean? I've, I've seen your stuff as well, and. Man, you guys tell the truth. You you try to give an honest opinion, and that's what we pride ourselves in. So, you know, I I respect it one hundred percent. And uh, just for accuracy accuracy's sake, it's the Three Kings of the Midway podcast, and their Twitter uh, uh, channel address is at Three Kings underscore Midway. And Dan, for those of you listening on our audio only, is at Dan Goodwin uh, the third. Or, I, 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 uh, capital I, 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 yeah. is that correct? Absolutely. All right. Yes, let's sir. talk. Some, yes, sir. Let's talk some Chicago bears football because, uh, what we saw today, uh, in my opinion was a team that was just not ready to compete. And this is a kind of a recurring thing that when that's, this team comes out of the tunnel in many games, they just do not look fired up and ready to perform. Did you get the same impression? Yeah, I got the same same uh, impression. I mean, they were lackadaisical out the gate. Um, you know, guys weren't really. There was no sense of urgency. You know, when you're when you're when you're battling for a roster spot and things like that, you would think some of these guys would come out and they would stand out, but nobody, mm-hmm. nobody stood out. You know, I take for example. Uh, I give you an example. The the um, the first play. Well, one of the first plays. When uh that that missed tackle on Devin Singletary and he took it into the end zone, right? You got Mario Edwards missed a tackle, so did Robert Quinn. He looked bad. Eddie Jackson took a bad angle, and clearly he took a bad angle because he thought those two guys had him bottled up and he wouldn't have to get in there. And then once he broke containment of those two guys, you know Eddie Jackson was at a disadvantage, and that's because you know you're you're pretty much a starter, you're solidified, so you're, you know you have nothing to worry about. Right. Um, but you still need these reps. You still need this practice in order to get your timing down on the football field. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what uh, the coaching staff needs to try to impress upon the players. Mm-hmm. They seem to not be doing that for whatever reason, especially on the defensive side of the ball. It's pretty, pretty atrocious tackling out there that I saw today. It was indeed. It was perhaps – well, there have been a lot of bad tackling games for the Bears over the last few years, but this perhaps was the, the worst one. It's definitely the worst one I've seen in a preseason game, which says a lot because usually preseason you see a lot of missed tackles. But there's this, the play that you made reference to. It's the first touchdown by the Bills. Quinn does a good job of forcing Singletary back into the middle of the field, but Quinn misses him. And then our man Eddie Jackson, there he is right there, wearing number four this season. Uh, doesn't come up with the tackle. So you're absolutely right. This was this was pretty much told us what we were in store for the rest of the day. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I, I, you, you see it right there. That's bad. That's that's mm-hmm. that's ugly football. It really, really is. It's not the type of football that gives you encourage, encouragement that Sean Desai is getting these guys ready to play uh, on Sundays. And I'm I, I'm hopeful that Sean Desai is going to bring back that Vic Fangio style of defense. But first and foremost, he's got to kick ass. He's got to get these guys fired up. He's got to get these guys to hurt their opponents. And right now it's a very docile, lethargic defense. What do you think about uh, Desai? What's your concern level for the, the new defensive coordinator of the Bears? <laughs> The two words that you use there, you know, they tripped me out a little bit because you said docile, you know, and and, and that's never a, a term on, in, that you should use on the football field, right? Docile? No. Yes. No, you don't want to be that. So right. um, there's a lack of urgency, man. And and like you said, Desai really has to, you know, he's, he's a nice guy, and I think we saw that. You know, we touched on it on Three Kings last week where um, we were kind of excited because – we saw some interaction with, between him and some of the players, right, when he was mic'd up and, and guys were laughing and joking with him. But uh, at this point, you you got to see some fire and desire from 
not only him, but also from the players. And if you're not able to pull that out of the players, you can't manufacture it when, when you don't have that, that, that type of fire throughout the week or whatever the case may be. Mm-hmm. You can't manufacture it on game day. Just go out there and all of a sudden flip a switch and things are going to go as planned. That's not going to work. So this is something that, that has to be built upon and you have to build on that every single day, every single day. Um, getting guys to, to buy in not only to your system, to your voice that you're, that you're, that you're, uh, that they're hearing. And then also you gotta, you gotta have them buy into actually giving their all on the football field, not just, you know, being lackadaisical, going through the motions type of situation. You know, we had a lot of missed tackles and I was, I was just surprised at that. I, I just couldn't believe how many missed tackles there were today. What do you think about what Toreen uh, Whitfield says in the chat room here? It says Nagy needs to give up play calling and just coach the team. Perhaps that might be something that could help the team if he is not looking at his play sheet and is much more focused on making sure that all three units are playing fired up alert football because right now it just seems like that's falling in between the cracks and these guys are going out there and they're not playing Chicago Bears football, which is attack in your face, bust your mouth uh, football. We're not seeing that, and we're losing the battle at the line of scrimmage. And, of course, it, it could be that we just don't have certain players to make that happen. So what do you think about what Turin says about Nagy perhaps maybe just concentrating on being the leader of all three units and not so much uh, calling plays? I think I think he's spot on. Um and this goes back to to my issues that I've had with Nagy, and it's well documented. You go back and listen to podcasts from from Three Kings, and you look at my Twitter feed, and I've been critical of his play calling, uh, if he's balanced or not. Um, I've been critical of that when it comes to Mag- Nagy, uh, also situational football and 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 uh, his way of manufacturing time on the clock and things like that. Those are all issues that I see from Matt Nagy, and some of that stems from him being so locked in on the offensive side, wanting to prove that he is right. I think it's a little pride that's there with Matt Nagy and Mm -hmm. he's hindering everything else that's going on on the football field. Mm -hmm. A lot of times if you focus on the entire football field and one of the things that I give credit credit to Matt Nagy for, because I don't bash him all the time. I'm not, I'm not one of these guys who would just sit here. You know, I look at the good, I look at the bad, but I call it out on both ends. Right. Mm -hmm. So you know, I look at Matt Nagy and I say, OK, for the most part, he keeps it fun. He keeps guys happy. Um, he has a good relationship with most of the players. He's he's in the locker room. He's with those guys. He galvanizes the troops. They want to play for him. They mm-hmm. seem like they like him. You know what I mean? They have fun. All these things that makes you a good coach. But when it comes to play calling, there's an issue there. There's a problem there. Mm-hmm. Many times you'll see Matt Nagy and he'll call a play and he's looking at the play call sheet and doesn't know the next play. He's it, It's like, you know, you, you got to have some type of rhyme or reason. It's like playing chess. Okay, this happens. This is what I'm going to next. If this happens on this play, I'm going to this play next. And he doesn't think far enough ahead, it seems like. It seems like he's just like under chaotic circumstances all the time. That's why we have problems getting the calls into the huddle. That's why we have problems with the play clock, things like that. It just doesn't make sense. You know, yep. coming out of a timeout, he doesn't know what play he wants to call. That to me, that's egregious. That doesn't make sense. Right. Um, so you know, I think I think he's spot on with that 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 uh, analysis there. And I think you know, if if he could give up play calling, focus on the entire team, hold people more accountable, hold his coaching staff more accountable, and then put trust in the coaches as well. Mm-hmm. If you're able to put some trust in the coaches and say, "Hey, Laser, you got it. I trust what you're going to do." Right. Then maybe maybe guys will start you know things will start clicking a little bit and people will have their own confidence level bolstered and and, and go up too. Mm -hmm. It took a while for Andy Dalton to get his first first down as a Chicago Bear. This is it at the completion to Jesse James. It was looking pretty impressive uh, for the most part. He should definitely make this team. Um, Your overall evaluation of Andy Dalton's play today. Well, I look at Andy Dalton's play today, and of course, the 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 one play that stuck out is the seventy three yard pass to to Rodney Adams, which was not a great throw. Let's be honest, right? I mean, Adams had to jump up and catch it against the side of the helmet of the other guy, right, of the mm-hmm. defender. So 
it wasn't a great, great pass, but, you know, he got the ball out there and he let his wide receiver make a play. That's what mm-hmm. sometimes you have to do, right? So yeah. I give him credit for taking the chance on that um, because guys are not always going to be wide open, running wide open. Um, so I give him credit for that, but it wasn't a great pass. I don't, I don't, I don't think he did anything that really stood out to me, uh, in terms of moving the ball. If you take away that 73 yard play, which could have easily been an, you know, interception, if not an incomplete pass very easily, mm-hmm. you know, he's, he's below what, what is he at 70 yards passing for the day? You know, so, so yes. it wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't that great. I mean, more than half of his yards was on that one play. So, right. um, you know, I look at it like that and I say it didn't really stand out. He didn't move the needle for me at all. I mean, he is what he is. He's Andy Dalton. Mm-hmm. Um, come to expect mediocrity, you know what I mean, from him. That's that's what I see. Yeah, it is uh, It is sad that that's the case. Let me pull up that uh, touchdown uh, pass from Dalton uh, to Adams, who appears to me, who has won a spot on this roster. That's a this great is, catch. Uh, yeah, a great catch. He's been playing well all Guys preseason. To push their go buttons, that's what you need to do. There's the catch. Uh, it, it wasn't a great throw, definitely a bit behind him, but Adams uh, made sure to come down with a difficult catch. Reminds me a little bit of the David Tyree Super Bowl catch, but uh, this one for the touchdown. And, you know, at least – at least this is Adams' isolated look, a nice move to get off the line of scrimmage. The coverage is not bad, although the defender never looked back for the ball. If he did, it could have been an interception, right? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So um, your uh, your thoughts about the play of Mitchell Trubisky, who comes into Chicago and, uh, <laughs> and, and lets people know, hey, maybe uh, I wasn't to blame after all. Maybe it's your head coach. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a funny thing, man. I mean, you know, it is. It's, there's a lot of people that are going to say that. Of course, Mitch was. You know, you got to give him credit. Twenty for twenty eight, two hundred twenty one yards. Mm-hmm. I think. What did he have? Two touchdowns or one? One touchdown. Uh, but, one. Um, touch, yeah. Let me yeah, pull one up the stats while you while you uh, share your opinion on uh, Mitchell. One one touchdown. I think it was one touchdown. But he had. Yeah. You know, he moved the ball repeatedly. I think they what had one one time where they end up having to punt the ball when he was out there. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, you look at, you look at what he did and it's like, okay, well, man, there's, there's something to be said about the defense, right? Yep. Um, there's a lot to be said about the defense. And the funny thing about it is if you look at what Mitch was doing, it's not like he was chunking the ball deep every play or anything like that, but he was, mm-hmm. he was giving his guys chances to win balls and then they would take off and make a run, you know, catch mm-hmm. a 10 yard pass and, you know, or a slant for eight yards and, Next thing you know, they're 17, 20 yards upfield, you know, and, and things like that. That's something that our guys were failing to do repeatedly on the football field. So, mm-hmm. you know, Mitch was throwing some of that little short to intermediate stuff and, and he was working for him. He's, you know, he did that for us well. He did that for Chicago well, you know. So um, I think he's he's good. If you put him in a situation where he can thrive and you 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 build the offense around what he does best, which clearly they're able to do more so than Nagy because Nagy, once again, the pride creeps in. He wants his way to work. No matter who you have on the field, this is what I'm going to do. And a lot of times the guys who you put in those positions, they don't have the skill set to to do what you want them to do. And it Mm -hmm. makes the offense look bad. It stalls the offense out. So that's what I see out there constantly um, each and every game, you know, uh, Rodney Adams, man, he's he's looking really good, and I think he's probably earned himself a spot. I, you know, I we talked about him a little bit last week as well, and I was like, well, Rodney Adams, you know, you know, I, whatever. But clearly, he's better than Riley Ridley. Clearly, he's better than Javon. I don't even see did Javon Wims play today. I, I didn't I, see him much. I think he got some snaps, but yeah, okay. he was he didn't do anything on the stat sheet. Snip, snip, probably. You know, I, I, I don't see how he sticks around. Him yeah. or Ridley at this point, these guys have been on the team for too long to 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 put another year into it when I don't see any improvement. I, I know the coaching staff doesn't see it either. Right. Well, and part of the problem when we talk about a guy like Javon Wims is the only reason he's been on the team is because of his special teams play, and then he's been he's needed to – pitch in that wide receiver when there's injuries or in certain formations and he just has not come through. 
But that brings us to another issue that we have seen in these first two preseason games is that the special teams play is atrocious. I mean, it is pathetic and it's worrisome. And Chris Tabor has been on my hit list for, for some time now, along with the wide receivers coach, Mike Furry. Your evaluation of the special teams play, how concerned are you and can this possibly be fixed for week one against the Rams? Man, I I think it can be fixed. I think you have some guys on the team um, on those bubble spots that can pitch in on on special teams and do some things, right? Mm-hmm. So so I'm not gonna say it cannot be fixed. I think you have time to get it fixed. But man, you know Chris Tabor, you know this is this is this is it for him too because there's there's several times that I can look to last year where he had issues. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I point out the Lions game last year. You know, for an example, just a, a brief example, you know, the Lions game where where you line nobody up back there deep, you mm-hmm. know, and you, you were prepared for an onside kick for mm-hmm. some strange reason. I don't know why. And then Cordero Patterson had to run all the way back mm-hmm. and scoop the ball up at the one yard line before, you know, another another guy got back there. So, you know, these are the things and these are the issues that we've been seeing on on special teams. And we see it today. It manifested itself on several, several different, you know, punt returns, kick returns, all kinds of stuff. They were having issues out there. So I don't know if he's not picking the right guys um, to be on special teams, to to put in work, but you may, he may have to switch some of that stuff up, you know, and and bring some other guys in there that are going to really do some of the dirty work because that's what it is in special teams. And Mm -hmm. you got those bubble players, you got to let them know, Hey, if you want to make this team, as a running back or as a linebacker, as a wide receiver, you're going to have to get out there and you're going to have bus heads on special teams. Mm -hmm. And if you can't do that, if you can't tackle, if you can't be a gunner, if you can't block, you're out of here, man. One of the nice things that the Chicago Bears uh, PR communications department does is that they put up the post-game press conferences of the coaches and and a player or two immediately after the game. Well, today they're not. Uh, apparently, there's a technical problem. <laughs> kind of uh, perfect timing to have a technical problem, so we won't uh, <laughs> we won't convenient. Uh, so we won't be, li- be able to listen to any of Matt Nagy's comments uh, post game. But uh, clearly, he he can't be happy with the performance, and he can't be happy w- with uh, how this team is fired up. And uh, I'm wonder if if People have uh, asked, people in the media have asked him about Mitchell Trubisky's uh, performance because, of course, many people are going to speculate, you know, did you do something wrong? Mm -hmm. And look at Leonard Floyd. Leonard Floyd certainly um, didn't play poorly with the Chicago Bears, but he goes to the Rams after the Bears failed to pick up his fifth-year option, and he has a a tremendous season with double-digit sacks, more than he ever had with the Chicago Bears. Mm -hmm. He's He's coming into his own as a player. He earns a, a nice big fat contract. And so you got to start wondering, is the same thing going to happen with Mitchell Trubisky, where he's going to go elsewhere? And we've seen this happen with a lot of uh, Chicago sports players before they leave Chicago and all of a sudden they start playing at a higher level. Um, so, I mean, I, I, this is frustrating, man. I, I'm trying to keep my cool here, Dan, because you're a guest and I don't want to go up. <laughs> man, hey, hey, you you can. I, I don't mind it. Sometimes it has to be said, you know, and, and you know, the, the, the real thing about this is that, you know, we, we look back and I've said it time and time again. I think I think Pace has done a good job of drafting some, some talented players. He's missed on some, but that's going to happen, right? You're going to mm-hmm. miss on some draft picks. Kevin sure. White, you know, who who knew he was going to be, a, you know, a glass a, a glass figurine out there. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's going to get broken every every other game. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you you miss on some things. You could even say you missed on Trubisky, even though, you know, I and, and I go back and forth because people have, you know, likened me to being a truther and, you know, things like that. Or, or then some people say, I hate Trubisky. And it's like, no, I don't hate the guy. I don't love him. He is what he is. He 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 was drafted much too early, and that was a problem for Pace. Mm-hmm. Now, when it comes to Nagy, though, it's the job of the coach to develop the talent that you have on the roster. There are several areas of talent on this roster. There are mm-hmm. talented guys out there. David Montgomery, you know, you didn't even want to hand him the ball for a time, mm-hmm. for, for a long period of time. He was fourth right. in the league in rushing, and there were games where he only ran the ball 
five times in a game or six mm-hmm. times in a game. You know, it went over 100 yards with with eight carries or something like that. So, you know, you have this type of situation where the, it seems like he's not focused on developing the talent. He just he wants a collective group of guys, them to already be at a certain established position and then be able to, you know, do his offense. But in the NFL, you have to draft. You have to build your team through the draft. Yep. You're not going to be able to just suck up, you know, free agents all the time. You got to build through the draft. You got to develop these guys. And most importantly, you got to put them in positions to win. If they can't succeed out there on the football field, that's indicative. That's that's a problem for the coach. The mm-hmm. coach is not putting them in the right positions, especially if you have these talented guys. You got guys like Quick that go somewhere else. Kwiatkowski, he went out to, to the Raiders and he's been, you know, doing well out there yep. in their training camp. You got Leonard Floyd, you got Adrian Amos. I mean, all these guys that have gone somewhere else and become really good players, very good players. Um, you know, it, it, it leaves a lot to be desired in the, in the, in the scheme of, of developing the talent that we have. We got some young talented players that need to be developed. Exactly. Uh, Ryan K. Billings uh, tells me, screw that, Aldo. I'll go off tomorrow <laughs> go on the Barfly Tailgate Show, which is at, uh, I think it's 9 a.m. Central, 10 a.m. out east when the Barfly Tailgate Show starts tomorrow morning. So you're going to get a lot of passionate takes from those guys. <laughs> I'm going to listen to it, too. I'm going to listen to it. <laughs> um now, uh, let's talk about Justin Fields. But before we do, actually, before we do, we got to talk about the offensive line. And the reason for that is because I am worried about the health of our quarterbacks. Look at what happened to Justin Fields on this play when the right tackle, I think this is Simmons, just messes up his assignment. And when I saw this, my heart dropped because it looked like Fields was beheaded. Fortunately, he got up and continued to play. Now, he did. He was limping a little bit, so he may re-aggravate re-ag- re-aggravated that groin injury uh, that forced him to miss a practice. Probably didn't uh, re-aggravate the groin injury on this play, but he, clearly he is not being protected well. What are your thoughts about this offensive line? I mean, I, I, I just got to say this. This is the – every year, Ryan Pace has one humongous fail. Uh, the offensive line, these offensive tackles may be it for this season unless they get some improved play right away. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. Um, man, what can you say? That you know that play there, my, you know, my heart dropped too because I was like, oh god, man, that that was that was ugly. And then there was another play where he was like picked up and slammed, and I think that's actually where he got that little limp from. Okay. He got picked up, scooped up, and slammed on his hip, mm-hmm. and. You know, when when you have a, a young quarterback out there, you don't want to let him get get blasted like that, get just demolished, right? Mm-hmm. So, you know, you got to put him once again. You got to put guys in a position to succeed. What's he doing out there in the fourth quarter with guys who are probably going to be cut? These a lot of the guys. When you see these guys playing in the fourth quarter, they're on the bubble. They need to make something happen, or they're getting out of there. Now, you know. That's the problem that we have right here. You know, when 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 you have Justin Fields out there in the fourth quarter and you put him behind, you already have a makeshift offensive line in the first quarter. What do you think it's looking like in the fourth? With mm-hmm. Shavia Simmons and you know, some of these guys, man, you know, this it's just not good. You know, so um everybody was saying, do you put him out there? Do you start him? That was a question that everybody had. Do we start Justin Fields? Because hey, maybe this is gonna be a problem. Maybe, maybe the offensive line is going to be a problem. Well, if you're playing them in the fourth quarter with with guys who are going to be cut and driving for UPS next week, you know what I mean? Yep. Why wouldn't you start him in the first game? Yep. Because he can do everything that Andy Dalton can do, but can do it better. All right. Period. Yeah, it's, it's troubling, and I've been saying this for weeks too, it's troubling that Fields – needs the development time. And so you want to see him surrounded by the best players. You want to see him taking as many snaps as possible at the number ones. But the predicament is, is that if you're serious about Andy Dalton being the starter week one and, and into the near future, then he needs playing time too. So you've built this quandary uh, up by the way you've built this roster and perhaps the easiest decision and the best decision would have been to say, 
Justin Fields is the number one quarterback. That way we can get him 75, 80% of the snaps with the ones, get him ready for week one, because we know that he athletically is a better quarterback than Andy Dalton has ever been and ever will be. And we know that he is capable of great things. We already have seen Andy Dalton's ceiling. He's not going to surpass that. He's not going to pass for 4,000 yards again in his career. It's just not going to happen, especially with the Bears. So, you know, it's it's this is Justin Fields' team. And so I, I, I'm going to sit down and say a prayer and say and, and ask the Lord, please get Matt Nagy to change his mind and make that move to Justin Fields. If he's healthy, I don't want him uh, to start week one if he's got a, a, a bad groin or any other injuries. Um, and, 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 and I think it also answers the question, who gives you a better chance to win a football game at this point based on what I have seen? Now, nothing is equal because, you know, uh, you've been playing against different uh, opponents. You've been playing with and, and against guys who are going to be driving Amazon uh, delivery trucks in a week or so. But, but based on what I've seen just from individual performance athleticism and so forth justin fields is going to give you the best chance to win a football game yeah clearly clearly i I don't think there's any debate there i mean you know like i said matt Nagy has always said that you know even even it's been documented that they scaled down and they drew in the the the, the play calling and they they closed some of the book you know Mm -hmm. the playbook up when when mitch was here and things like that you Mm -hmm. have a guy in justin fields whose arm is better whose legs are better, whose th- processing is better, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Andy Dalton, he doesn't have a very strong arm, you know. Um, mm-hmm. He can anticipate some things and, and, and things like that. That's something that, that Justin uh, will be able to do as he gets, you know, as he grows into his to his form as, as a quarterback. Right. Nobody is able to do that right off the bat, you know. But I, I go back and I look at some of the quarterbacks that have started, you know, Justin Herbert. I mean, yeah, somebody got hurt, but right. he started pretty much the whole year. Right. You know, Andrew Luck started. Troy Eggman. I mean, look at Troy Eggman. He was one in fifteen. You know, mm-hmm. and actually, he was. Somebody told me he was actually zero in fifteen because the one game that they won wasn't. <laughs> he wasn't playing. Mm-hmm. So, you know, he's zero in fifteen. You got Peyton Manning who went out there and he struggled. There are going to be bumps. There are going to be struggles along the way. But at the end of the day. This guy is more dynamic and can do everything you need him to do. Mm -hmm. And when you're in a situation where you have an offensive line who's kind of suspect right now, they need to gel. They need to come together because they really haven't had a whole lot of practice together, to be honest with you. Right. You know, Justin Peters didn't, you know, Jason Peters, I should say, he's, you know, just now coming into the fold. You know, what's he going to be capable of? We don't know yet. So, you know, when you have that, you need that dynamic guy who is able to keep the defense honest, right? Who's able to say, hey, if you don't, if you don't contain me, I will break this and I'll run for 30, 40 yards, right? Like he's done several times. Today, four carries, 46 yards or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he's also able to chunk the ball 65 yards on the road, you know? Mm-hmm. So when you have that type of player back there, use them, man. You owe it to Khalil Mack, you owe it to Akeem Hicks, you owe it to Danny Trevathan, Roquan Smith, guys who have carried this team for Mm -hmm. three or four years, right? You owe it to them to say, hey, let's put the best player out there and let's try to win games. Because Mm -hmm. if we put the, you know, Andy Dalton out there, once again, we're putting all the pressure back on the defense. And right now, the defense and Deshaun Sy, there are some issues there. There are some major issues. Mm -hmm. So. We're, we're putting ourselves at a disadvantage if we don't start them, to be honest with you. Yep, I totally agree. Perhaps uh, the best play Justin Fields had today was this com- uh, 32-yard completion to uh, Jesse James. I think this is Jesse James, is it? Yep, yeah. it is. Uh, yeah. Just a beautiful throw, and um, it's off of play action, holds the linebackers. There's a delayed blitz, uh, and he just gets it off before the defender gets in his face. Nice play. Beautiful throw. Mm-hmm. And and then he follows that afterwards uh, with a nice run. And actually, before that play and after that play, he had a he had a nice run showcasing his ability to just outrun any linebacker and most defensive backs, if not every defensive back in the NFL. And yeah. so you need that. And 
what is what is you know fascinating about Justin is that he's got uh, excellent pocket presence with the exception of that one play that he got blown up on. He just seems to know what is going on in the pocket and, and able to avoid rushes. Uh, and he looks so calm. It's, it's the, the scene, the, 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 the situation is not too big for him. You know, everyone uh, is, talks about, well, they should not everyone, but a lot of people are saying it, it, they should bring him along the way Patrick Mahomes should be brought along, which is Matt Nagy's plan. But we don't know if Patrick Mahomes wouldn't have thrown for 4,000 yards and 25 touchdowns in his rookie season. We don't know that. I mean, you know, that worked in Kansas City because you had Alex Smith, a guy who knew the system, the guy who played in the system, the guy that they had a lot of trust in. So they had that luxury of sitting Mahomes down for, for a season. Mm-hmm. You you don't have that luxury here in Chicago, and and Dan, I, I I really appreciate what you said. You owe it to the veterans. You owe it to the Khalil Max. You owe it to these guys who their window for championships is is closing quickly, and mm-hmm. and perhaps the formula for victory is right there in front of you. But you've already announced that he's going to be sitting week one. Does them doesn't make sense to me. Does not no. make sense. <sighs> Man. I think the thing that, that, that bothers me most about that is that, you know, like you said, Alex Smith's situation is totally different. He was there. Andy Reid actually wanted to draft Alex Smith. That's mm-hmm. how that's how much he liked Alex Smith. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you have a situation where he, he brought Alex Smith in there. Then Mahomes fell into their lap. You know, Mahomes wasn't on the radar. Mahomes had a losing record in college. Let's mm-hmm. Let's be honest about it. So when everybody says, you know, oh, you know, the Bears missed on Mahomes and things like that. There's a ton of teams that missed on Mahomes, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to, you know, <laughs> condemn or, or, or crucify Pace for that, right? Mm-hmm. A lot of teams missed on him. Right. But the, 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 the important thing that you look at when, when it comes to that and what, why, why I'm going there is because Andy Dalton's new to the system too. Right. He, he's not, he, he hasn't been in Chicago for two or three years. He doesn't know the system that well. You know, he's, He's got some familiarity with with Bill Lazor, and that's about it. And that's mm-hmm. why they brought him in. Now, you know, you got two guys coming in at the same time. One's a rookie. One's a 10-year vet, which we know who he is. He's never won a playoff game. He's one touchdown to seven interceptions in playoff games. Like, I can go on and on and on about why Andy Dalton should not be the starting quarterback. And, and, and I've tried not to do that, you know, because I don't want people to think that I'm just crapping all over him. Mm-hmm. But – it's almost to the point where we need to start doing that because, you know, you're trying to fool us once again. And that's the problem that I've had with Chicago as an organization. They sell the fan base on mediocrity and the fan base has accepted it so much that now we're conditioned to accept mediocrity. And we look at players who are mediocre and we give them passes for mediocrity. And and in my opinion, I feel like we should be trying to get better at every position all the way through from top to bottom, from coaching to, to, to even upper management, you know, everybody should be evaluated at this point in time. Um, Especially since we drafted Justin Fields, you know, you, you once again, put him in a position to win, man. And we can't do that if, if we're not evaluating, you know, wholeheartedly and and saying, Hey, how are we going to get this thing done? Right. Totally, I'm totally with you. I, I I disagree with nothing. What you said, I agree with everything. Um, a lot of people in the chat room are uh, talking about the play of Justin Herbert. This is his touchdown run. Uh, Khalil Herbert, excuse me. He looks like a stud, man, doesn't he? Yeah, he's he, he looks real good. And and what what gets me about about him too mm-hmm. is he's one of those guys we we're talking about. He's he's willing to play some special teams as well. You see him out there a couple of times, right? And you yeah. also see him returning kicks. So yep. and he did it. He had a, a, a nice kick return earlier. Not, you know, he didn't break away or anything like that. But he, you know, when, when you can get 20 or 20 or 30 yards off of a kickoff return, I'm happy with that. Yep. You know, so it, the field position is, is so important. If you look at last year, we were always, always starting deep in our own our, our own territory. Mm-hmm. So that's a problem. That's something that needs to be addressed. And that's, you know, Chris Tabor needs to, he needs to, he needs to get on top of things when it comes to that. Ravi says, uh, Justin Herbert, or excuse me, Khalil Herbert reminds me of Thomas Jones. I'd say that uh, Jones ran with a little bit more power 
Um, but uh, but yeah, there is some some similarities there. So uh, if he can deliver like Jones did, you know, I'd be very very happy with uh, with that. Um, another guy who has been catching my eye these two preseason games is Caleb Johnson. We saw him on this punt return. <laughs> <laughs> this is just unbelievable. He's out there playing the gunner role, blocks the blocker at, uh, into the 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 kick return guy. It was a super play. I think this guy is going to make the team. What do you think about Caleb? Uh, I think I think Caleb has done some pretty good things. He missed a couple of tackles. He's yes. had a couple of issues, but mm-hmm. that play there, it's like he was like, "Look, I can't get to the guy, so I'm just going to push him into him." Right? That was mm-hmm. an awesome play. The only thing that I say, hey, you know, focus on is he's trying. He kind of started celebrating a little bit too early. Yeah. Don't touch the guy because you you just pushed his guy into him. You just still got to put your hands on him, make sure he's down. You know what I mean? Yep. So. Yeah, and, and the other thing regarding um, celebrating too early and some of these little things that good coaches make sure that their players don't do. When uh, on that play where Justin Fields was was hammered, the ball was loose on the ground, and guys were just late to react to the ball on the ground. And this is something that is so irritating because it's happened now with the last two or three generations of Bears coaches that they're not you know, really, really stressing these basic fundamentals that we learned as kids when we were playing flag football, for heaven's sake. So uh, it's it's disturbing. You know, it, it just, again, is pointing – it's pointing the pick the the finger to this Bears coaching staff not being perhaps as good as we may have been led to believe. It's, that's it's that's true. all effort. That's it's all effort, but it falls on the coaching staff's shoulders because if they're not demanding that, if you're mm-hmm. not demanding that guys go out there and give it their all, they're not going to. They're right. going to do just enough to get by. It's just mm-hmm. like you know that that's that's. Everybody does that, you know. If you if you don't demand excellence and you don't want those guys to to perform, you got to draw it out of them somehow. You got to give them something, something to 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 get it out of them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, like I said, it's so much talent on the roster, yeah. but it's untapped potential. We need to realize it needs to materialize now, and mm-hmm. that's the problem that we don't. That's the problem that we have. And I think once again, if Nagy comes out of that playbook a little bit and focuses a little bit more on that, he's the type of person that those guys would give their all for. I agree. He I would. agree. Yep. Um, here's another nitpick thing that I have with the Chicago Bears, especially since uh, Nagy has been coaching, is when there is a questionable uh, play on the field where you know it's potentially going to be reviewed or challenged, you know, why not get to the line of scrimmage and call a play right away? Here's the situation here where the pass is seemingly completed. It's initially called a completion. He's, he's, he's running to the line of scrimmage quickly, the receiver, because he knows it's going to be challenged. Yeah. But what does Nagy do? He takes his time getting a play in, takes his time with the whole thing, and what happens? It's challenged and reversed. This has happened continuously, and it just drives me nuts. <laughs> yeah. And and it drives you even more nuts when you see other teams that are able to to, to get that off, to get the next play off. Right. That's the thing. He never has another play in his holster. Yeah. Even if it's a running play, even if it's a, you know, just something, hey, if we're in this situation, we need to get a playoff quick, go with this one. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And that's that's what he could easily say, but you know, there's no there's, I've seen other teams do it all the time, but for whatever reason, you know, like I said, he just doesn't he he, he doesn't know what he's going to call next. It right. seems like he's constantly he's got too many plays in his mind. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Scale it back a little bit, man. Right, and we see it, you know, with the dreaded Green Bay Packers. They're really great at that, you know. And I and you see this team so often, the coaching staff. Why don't they say, "Yeah, we should do that too"? I mean, what's happened? What's going on here? I don't understand. Crazy. <laughs> it's driving me nuts, man. <laughs> All right, who else? Uh, let's let's try to end things here on a positive note. Who else caught your eye? And, and because these games are more about 
evaluating individual performance. You know, mm-hmm. Sean Desai got a lot of crap today and so forth, but he's calling vanilla defenses and stuff. Now you can blame him for not getting the guys fired up. That is is true, but mm-hmm. we you. In these games, you want to evaluate individual performances. We've talked about some of the guys who lost individual performances, and, we, and we've talked about some of the guys who have. But I'd like to know f- from you, Dan, any other players that you'd like to shout out from a, pa- a positive standpoint? From a positive standpoint, I saw I saw Duke Shelley. He popped a couple of times. Now he made a couple of couple of gaffes on on coverages and things like that. But mm-hmm. um, what I do like from Duke Shelley is that he out of all the tackling that was going on, mm-hmm. he made a couple of good tackles, right? Mm-hmm. Where mm-hmm. it was kind of like an open field tackle. He was able to get the guy down to the ground, wrap the guy up, you know, drive drive with his legs and get him to the ground, that type of thing. And that really stood out to me because I saw so much terrible tackling. So mm-hmm. when I when I saw him make, I think it was about two tackles that he made that that were really good. I was like, okay, well, he at least he's trying, you know. And, and if he's battling for, I don't know, the nickel spot, if he wants to stay in there or whatever the case may be, you know, he's going to have to do that. You're going to have to have a guy who's able to stick with somebody and get him to the ground, you know, in that slot position. So um, that stood out to me a little bit. Ravi mentions Artie Burns, the former number one draft pick for, for the Pittsburgh Steelers, who did not play last year for the Bears because he got an injury. He was re-signed. He's missed a bunch of camp, but he finally got to, on the football field today, and he played a very aggressive cornerback position. I agree with Ravi. I thought he had uh, a bunch of nice plays. Yeah, that's that's really good, too. And you like to see that. That's I think that's what everybody's looking for out of this defense right now. Mm-hmm. We were so – you know, bend but don't break last year, right? You know, under under Pagano, you want to see somebody out there playing aggressive. Mm-hmm. You're going to get beat in a, as a cornerback, number one, because the wide receivers are so talented in today's game, mm-hmm. and quarterbacks are so supremely talented, right? They can yep. put the ball in places that they couldn't do before. So mm-hmm. you're going to get beat sometimes, but do you keep that aggressiveness? Do you keep fighting, Right. And that's what I like. I, I, it, it stood out with Vildor a couple weeks ago. He had a bad game this this game, I will say. But I, one one thing that I do like about him is that he has amnesia. If he gets beat, go to the next play. I got to mm-hmm. win the next one. And, right. and he's going to fight for it. So, you know, when you see that out of Artie Burns, then that's good because, hey, you know, he, he he's talented. You know, he was a first-round pick. Yep. He's had some injuries, but he's definitely talented. Yep. And I would tell uh, uh, everyone uh, who might be down on Kendall Vildor, don't give up on him yet. This guy has really has a lot of promise now, you know, after his uh, less than uh, acceptable game today, you want to see how he bounces back in that final preseason game. I'm sure he's going to get some snaps uh, because they still have to determine who is going to get snaps at that defensive back uh, position. So uh, I I got a feeling he's going to bounce back and and play better than average uh, in the next game and into the season. Anyone else? uh, You know, I got to, I got to do a shout out to Kyrie's Tonga. I uh, <laughs> I think this guy is proving uh, me wrong. I was uh, skeptical of the draft pick, but boy, oh boy. I mean, he's got so much strength. He's pushing uh, – he, he's winning the battle at the line of scrimmage, pushing his uh, uh, offensive counterpart back into the quarterback, back into the backfield. I'm impressed by him. Yeah, yeah, definitely. He's he's a he's a big surprise, you might say, right? Cuz mm-hmm. what was he? 6 round 6 round draft pick. So Correct. when you when you when you get a 6 round draft pick and he's making waves, he's making impacts like that, mm-hmm. man, you can't you know, you know, you can't do anything but tip the cap to him because that's that's all work. Mm-hmm. That's drive, that's determination. So, um doesn't matter where you go in the draft, man, if you're able to get out there and do something, then you you can be seen, you can be heard. And another guy that stood out to me, I got to give him a shout out is Thomas Graham Jr. Uh, yeah. he, he he had a nice play on the ball there. And what I liked about that play is that he displayed ball skills, right? Mm-hmm. Most of the time when you see a cornerback, he's trying to catch the ball with his body. He mm-hmm. reached up, and even though he didn't make the grab, he got two hands on the ball. He tried to make the catch with his hands. That's yep. a sign of a guy who's talented, who, who's got some confidence in his skill set and is able to make plays on the ball. So he'll he'll make some good plays in coverage. Um, if he, you know, if he's around, if he sticks around. Toa has a good question here. How was Larry Borum today who saw some snaps at left tackle? I really can't, uh, you know, say that I saw anything terrible or good. 
I guess the fact that I didn't notice him is a, always a good sign for an offensive lineman, right? Yeah. <laughs> did did think, you see think, anything uh, good or bad about him? I, I, I didn't see. I didn't see. You know, it was just there. It was. It was like um, I liken him today. I, I've seen him do some really good things, but today it seemed like he played similar to um, Bobby Massey. If okay. you look at Bobby Massey, he was just there. There yeah. was no. It, it was a consistent, inconsistent. <laughs> guy out there you know what i mean now right. now i'm not saying born born is a rookie so you know That's he's right. he's got some skills i like the way he was doing his kicks uh today i saw that um he was able to stay in front of some guys a couple of times and things like that so he didn't give up anything either so that's a good thing um mm-hmm. consistency is always good so if you're able to be consistent out there and not get penalties keep guys in front of you you'll 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 make it in the league you'll make it Ravi has got a movie recommendation for us, which is probably what we should do tonight so we can forget about the Bears <laughs> game. He's, he says he saw Rescue Dawn. Highly recommended. Werner Herzog, the acclaimed documentary filmmaker, directed this film. Are you into movies? I do like movies. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it, absolutely. It, it, I might have to check that out. Yeah, check that out and then report back to us. I'd love to have you on our Tuesday night show, Dan and Aldo Bear Their Souls. That's our kind of raunchy uh, late night show on Tuesdays. If you're available, we'll have you in the future. We'll talk about movies, uh, football, and uh, and uh, Dan's sex life. Dan's sex life always comes <laughs> on, on that show. So. I'm all and for I, it, man. Let me know, definitely. I, I'll be here. And and Ravi, Ravi has some good points today. So uh-huh. you know, I, I I gotta I gotta at least give this this movie situation, this documentary that he's talking about a try because yeah. hey, you know he's he's made some good points with everything else. So. I'm going to take your word for it. Ravi's a good guy. Um, <laughs> the other thing is um, uh, that besides um, – yeah, what, so what are you hoping to see this final preseason game? Are you hoping to see Justin Fields – I'm sure you're hoping to see Justin Fields out there with the starters, correct? Yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely I'm definitely ready to see him with some starters, with some ones. Mm-hmm. Um, Nagy said he wanted to do it in practice last week, you know, and – I, you know, I just don't want to see him working with 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 guys who are third string, fourth string guys who, who may not be on the team. You know, you're, right. you're talking about 80 guys on the roster right now. Mm-hmm. It needs to be cut down to 53. So think about how many players he's playing with that are not going to be there. Right. So if he, you know, if if you want to let this guy get some burn and some some traction, you got to put him out there with guys who are who are going to be he's going to be playing with. I doubt Allen Robinson plays next week. I doubt Mooney plays. Um, but it'll be nice to get him out there with somebody besides Riley Ridley or Javon Wims, who's only basically used as a blocking wide receiver. Right. You know, I mean, everybody knows that that's the that's the problem with Wims. He's a good blocker, but he's predictable. So when he comes in the game, more than likely they're gonna run the ball. Mm-hmm. You don't have to, you know, you we know that. You know what I mean? Sure. So you know. I will say this, Dan, that I I think that there is a chance we may see A. Rob and Mooney and all of the starters see so. a, a good uh, like first quarter. Now it'll probably be Dalton with those guys, but the reason I say that is because Nagy said he was going to play starters in preseason, and he hasn't done much of it. I mean, Mooney, uh, excuse me, A. Rob hasn't suited up at all. So mm-hmm. I got a feeling that as a tune-up for week one that we're going to see some of these starters play at least a full quarter and they've got two weeks before that opening uh day game so maybe that's going to happen i i would be shocked if they go if they give a lot of playing time to so so many of these guys that you know are going to get cut i hope so i really i really hope so i i um I don't know what to say if if we don't go that route if we don't make some things happen with some of these guys Mm -hmm. then get prepared for an ugly week one game because the guys are not going to be in sync. They're not going to have their timing down. Exactly. It's going to be a problem. It's going to be a problem. And I am already having nightmares about what Aaron <laughs> Donald is going to do to our quarterback. And, and Leonard <laughs> Floyd. <laughs> and Leonard Floyd, right. <laughs> Mr. Mack for the win says, I didn't see the press conference. What type of bullshit did they say today? <laughs> well, Mr. Mack, uh, nobody saw it, uh, at least on their Twitter channel, because the uh, Bears did not uh, show it. Uh, apparently there was a technical problem, very convenient, as Dan said earlier in the show. Mm-hmm. So uh, 
before we get out of here, I want people to know about your podcast. Uh, tell people uh, what it's about, who who are the three kings, and where people can find it. Well, you can find us on Twitter, of course, at three kings of the midway or at, at three kings underscore midway. Um, we have three hosts, myself, uh, at Dan Goodwin the third on Twitter. Um, we have another host by the name of Roy uh, Williams, um, and that's at Ill Will, and then Devore Nesby. Um, and that's at Devore Nesby the second. Mm-hmm. Um, and what we do is we we get on there, we talk Bears football, right? We, we, we talk Bears football, we keep it lively, we keep it fun. Uh, we try to have some jokes about some stuff, but we also uh, we, we want to give people um, objective takes. You know, of course, we're fans of the team. We love the Bears, mm-hmm. but we're also going to we're, we're not afraid to call people out if we need to. Um, you know, we've we, we've had run ins with with players and agents and all, all types of stuff. So, you know, it happens. It, it, it happens. But at the end of the day, we're just trying to be honest. That's all we're doing There's no. It's no, you know, we hate a guy or anything like that, right. um, but but we're honest, we're, we're, we're accepting. And then, of course, if we're wrong, like I, I was on pace hard. I was on pace bad, mm-hmm. right? And when he, he was able to pull off the, the trades that he was able to get, he got Justin Fields, he got Tevin Jenkins, he got Larry Borum. You know, this draft was so good. I said, I came in the very next day and I'm like, hey, I got to give him his credit. He, he, did his, he did his thing. So, you know, it's it's fun to be on there, man. We, we have a, li- a lively show. Uh, it comes on. Uh, we, we do it once a week. We're, we're slow rolling it into more things. We're on Twitter now. We're going to have a live show that we do. Um, we also did like a little pregame thing on, on Twitter for Spaces, and everybody was on there and talking about it and things like that. We did a little, a little uh, halftime show as well. So, you know, it's, it's a lot of things that we have in the, in the, in the makings for, and we're, we're looking forward to – to doing more and interacting with more people. So we appreciate it. Well, uh, I'm, I'm impressed uh, by you. And uh, as, as payment for you being on, I am going to be listening to the next several three Kings of the Midway podcast. And I would love to have you back on and uh, your cohorts too. Uh, I would love to, you know, chat with, with the sure. entire three Kings uh, podcast team. So we'll make that happen in the near future. Any other shout outs that uh, you want to give out before we head out of here? Man, shout out to you for having me. Shout out to the, uh, the, 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 you know, the bar room here. We really appreciate you, you uh, showing us some love and, and calling on me at the last minute. Um, shout out to bears Twitter, man. We, I think, I think bears Twitter is, is great, man. We, we have our, we fight, you know what I mean? Some, oh, yeah. sometimes, like you know, guys, guys don't get along and don't agree. But you know that's what sports is. It's an opinion-based thing, that's and right. and we can all agree to some things. We can disagree on things, but you know everybody has a different opinion and different perception of what's going on. I like to get those, man. So send me the hate, send me the love. It doesn't <laughs> matter. I enjoy it all because I like to see and hear what people are thinking about. Excellent, excellent job, Dan Goodwin. Follow him on Twitter at Dan Goodwin the Third. And don't forget, uh, we've got a lot more Bears coverage coming your way, including tomorrow morning, the Barfly Tailgate Show. You better believe there's going to be some F-bombs flying out of the sky. I can't wait. I'm <laughs> listening to that. <laughs> yeah, I'm listening be, to that. They're going to be a blast. So uh, thanks for joining us on the After Game Show, uh, this abbreviated version, because we didn't get to hear Matt Nagy's bullshit, as Mr. Max said in the chat room. So we were uh, subjected to it today. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> but you know what? We'll probably grab a couple of, uh, of, of his bullshit shit lines and put them on the bar flight tailgate show tomorrow morning dan thanks again for joining us and for everyone tuning in thank you very much we'll see you next time bye-bye thank you